here we're trying out the Mossberg 500 uh, for a Burpot uh, build. So uh, we're just going to test it out a little bit and um, we're going to do the conversion later on. Let's have at it. <laughs> it sounds and kicks like a 12 gauge. <laughs> it's pretty new, so the action is still a little bit rough on it. It's pretty new. Those were the first three shots. That's what I'm saying. It's yeah. pretty new. <laughs> Same thing. Safety is pretty tight. Other than that, it goes bang. Thank you, it's Jeff with Gear Report. And we're going to try something a little bit different here. Instead of doing from scratch build on a new gun, we're actually doing a conversion. We'll do a couple of these. This one we have taken what started life as a Magpul edition uh, Mossberg 500 pump action shotgun. Uh, we've already taken the Magpul furniture off, so we won't need this stock or this uh, four end grip any longer. We have the barrel of action here, or actually the barrel and the action. And we have a kit from Bullpup Unlimited. Pretty neat, you see the URL here, you can go check them out. Made right here in the USA, they're in Kentucky. Probably the easiest way to explain this is to dive in. Let's show you what's in here. I already had the instructions out. We'll go over those in a minute. So let's see what we have in here for the parts. And uh, actually, let me get this box out of the way. So you can see this one is for a Mossberg 500. It'll work with any Mossberg 500 that has a bead sight, does not have the vented rib along the top. Uh, there are a couple other stipulations they have, so if you have any questions, then go to their website, bullpupunlimited.com, and check it out. And you get all the details there. Make sure we got all the parts out. So the tube will go on the forend, and that's part of the trigger assembly. Some rail sections for the housing. A couple different um, attachment points. This is going to go with uh, this. And then the bag of hardware. I am going to put all this hardware right here on this piece of foam to keep it from rolling away. All right, let's get started. First step is uh, obviously to strip down the shotgun. We've already done that, so all the furniture's off. I've left it apart with the barrel out because we're gonna put the foregrip on here shortly. First thing though, why don't we go ahead and put these little rail sections on. So to do that, and uh, by the way, if you're looking at the instructions as they came from Bullpup Unlimited, they are pretty lengthy because they're pretty thorough. Important warning here not to over tighten the screws. This is a plastic housing. Many of the places where the screws go in will have stainless inserts, but still you don't want to strip anything out. We start with the gun disassembled, and uh, if you watch the video, which I uh, recommend to you at bullpupunlimited.com, they have an installation video, and they actually put these pieces on later. We're going to have to do it now as it states in the instructions because this is held nice and steady while it's assembled. So we're going to use these little uh, machine head screws. The instructions say there are 12 of these little machine head screws. There are actually 11. That was a misprint in the instructions. So if you get this kit and you're looking around wondering where's my last screw, there isn't one, there are only 11. So again, getting it tight but not too tight because I don't want to break anything. I'm really wondering how long this is going to take. I was talking to the um, 
think he's the president of the company, I believe so, the founder. Uh, his name is JJ at uh, Bullpup Unlimited. And he said, you know, since I'm kind of a gun guy and we do AR builds and other, you know, not, not a gunsmith, but uh, somewhat handy, that he was thinking this would be a 20 to 30 minute process for me uh, once we got the Mossberg donor gun taken apart. So, you know, we'll, we'll see. The video won't lie. We will see how long this takes. I'll be sure and take my time and uh, get it all right. So I know we need to take these apart. That end comes off. The sound will come off as well. We get the sides uh, pushed in. There we go. That one's off. Good. So we'll put these at the different ends. This is supposed to fit together rather snugly, but actually it came, came apart pretty easily. So that aside, first step in the instructions here. We've already put the little rail sections on, so now we are attaching this to the back of the receiver shotgun and uh, this should be a pretty snug fit. There we go. You're going all right. Again just like everything else we're trying not to over tighten and damage anything. That a little snug but not too much. It's an aluminum aluminum housing that we're tightening that into so I'm not gonna go too far there down here at step three already. We're making good time here. This piece is going to slide right over the tube. There we go. And we want to be sure that the little fingers here line up appropriately. So I need to flip that over. And there we go. Now the little fingers fit right into the little grooves and we're in good shape there. Make sure everything cycles okay. Yep, it does well. No issues so far. So now we can put the barrel back on already. So to do that, I almost forgot. To put the barrel on, we need to pull this halfway. Not all the way out, not all the way in. There we go. And then the barrel slides in. Helps if it's aligned properly. There we go. At this point, we install the barrel. Good. Well, already off the first page. So now, it's not it. We are using the Mossberg. So we're going to skip the Remington 870 instruction and go to right here with the slide release lever. So, so we're looking at things the same way here. There we go. That sticks out the bottom. So that's in. Now, this piece is the forearm guide, and you see there's a slot in the bottom of the lower half and the forearm. We simply set that in there. We're already to the point of setting the barrel in here. This, I gotta tell you, this is going quicker. Even after watching the video and seeing how quick this would be, it's, it's going quicker than I expected. All right, so as we set this in, we have to lift the trigger up, the trigger bar, and make sure that it is actually in the trigger area. Uh, hit that again so it's resting on the front of the trigger. Obviously that's what is going to push the trigger. And we need to be sure that it, this uh, trigger bar is sitting flat over here uh, once it's down in. Otherwise it'll rub against the side and bind. So that uh, you know, I keep pausing because it seems like it should be more difficult than this. So if I if it looks like I'm a bit lost here, 
I keep stopping and thinking to myself, this is too easy so far, I have to be missing something. Um, I mean, I've read the instructions, I've watched the video, but still it's going together even quicker and easier than I expected it would. All right, so let's move on in the directions now that we have set it in place. All right, moving on to step nine, your new unit should now look like this. Well, it does. All right, so we're on track. After your shotgun is installed in the lower shroud, look at the rear and bottom two inserts in the adapter block. Should line up with the bottom two holes in the lower shroud. We'll put two button head screws in. So there, we're looking back at, at this end for these two. And yes, they are lined up. There are stainless inserts in here. And button head screws, here we go. One here, and one here. These are the small, smaller of the Allen wrenches. I should mention the tools, three Allen wrenches included here. I think that's all we're going to need. I believe all of the tools to put this together are actually included in this kit. But it screws in the lower shroud. All right, so that's it. Again, getting them snug, not over tightening them. All right, next it shows it upside down. Turn the unit upside down and take your forearm and line up the two rear holes with the insert. All right, okay, so forearm. <laughs> I'm just gonna grab the old bag pull forearm. That's not the one we're using. We're using this one. And uh, as we saw earlier, let me set this down here and I'll move the whole thing over so we can see what we're looking at. Inside the forearm, we have two little indentions that are square, a single and a double. Here we have a single and a double. So it should be as simple as lining those up and running some screws through them. Back ones are lined up and there's the front one in place. So one, two, on. Next we will so temporarily slide that stock into place. There we go. Now we should be able to test the functionality. Make sure. There we go. Ah, that little trigger actuating rod was out of the channel. I'm told that that's one of the few mistakes you can actually make on this is to let that get out of the channel where it will rub up against the side of the housing. So I popped it back in there. Now we should be able to cycle. There we go. Function check. Perfect. At this point, place the upper shroud on top of the lower shroud. Align the ejection port opening. Seriously, I think we're almost done. Align the ejection port. Well, that ejection port looks pretty well aligned, as are the little screw areas here. So now we turn it over and put the four one inch screws. All right, that's going to be these. One, two. Four. Now I know that the idea at this point is not to really tighten them down, just to get them in there holding. I just want a couple turns on each one so it threads it in. But I like that this uses a standard AR-15 grip. I like it and I don't like it. I like it because I can't stand this A2 grip. This this bump on the front bugs me. It doesn't fit my hand. 
So since it uses standard AR grip, I can put something I like better on here, pretty cheap and pretty easy. So I do like that. Now we're going to go to, uh, we've just put the upper shroud on, so now we put a screw through the back to hold that in place. Button head screw there. And again, we have a stainless um, insert, threaded insert, so we're not screwing into plastic, we're actually screwing into the stainless insert. Right. So that's good. That was step 16. Holy smokes, we are almost done. Now, let's move to the front. We'll hold that together. Slide this cap in place. Wiggle it in there. And we've got what two machine screws to hold that in. And there we have it as simple as that. If you can operate an Allen wrench, this is a pretty simple conversion. Here's what it looks like when it's done. Honestly, not a bad looking bullpup. I think it looks kind of sharp. Be aware that I actually had to ask Bullpup Unlimited about the trigger being split in half. That is by design. He called it a safety trigger. So don't be alarmed when you put it together and think you broke your trigger. Don't try to glue it together. That's the way it's supposed to look. I think it's kind of intimidating from the end. It just kind of looks cool. And notice the Fox Den Tactical Paracord Sling. That's their veteran pattern because I'm a veteran. Thanks to ARCustoms.com for sending that over. Please check us out, like us, follow us, subscribe on Gun District, Pinterest, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. It would really mean the world to us if you would tell your friends about Gear Report.